morning i welcome you all on day 3 of our webinar tri serial genesis in apocalyptic world 2020 our speaker for today dr nirmal das gupta researcher from from sanford burha medical discovery institute in diaga usa his topic for today is how do bats carry so many Now, before presentation today, I have a few important announcements to make. This is in connection with this on the participants kindly switch off their audio and video mode streaming, and kindly place their questions in the chat box, which is to be taken up next session. Now, since we are coming to the end of our webinar series today, we shall be providing you feedback form. which has to be submitted on this form shall be almost towards the end of today's session you can get access to it for your honest feedbacks and give us your suggestions as well because this is we needing for carrying out in you know, of that we intend to carry out in the months to come now once you submit your feedback form on the receiving an automated intimation regarding submission of the same but kindly make sure to fill in your correct credentials the spelling check on since all of you have participated in the tri series we, we hope to send you the e certificates of participation now since there are technical issues that is cropping up every now and then we are taking a span of seven working days clearly we would try and reach out to all of you by the twelve but in case of any inadvertent miss error if you are unable to receive your participation certificate by that in touch with either deep chandra himself dr shripa and our telephone numbers are already available with you cheering may i now request my fourthy to kindly offer today Dr. Nirmal Dashmal for joining us, and thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You can start. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dotto, Dotto Rai. Um, I once again welcome everyone uh, to this last session of our uh, tri series, tri webinar series. So today, our uh, guest and our lecturer, lecture, uh, our speaker. is dr nirmallo dashgupto so uh, it is my responsibility to introduce our speaker today's speaker um myself and uh, uh, we actually met in the national institute of cholera and enteric disease which is situated in kolkata during the time of our phd work and uh, nirmallo has a bsc of uh, chemistry honors and he completed biochemistry masters from calcutta university and followed by that he joined so many different institutions uh, in particular glen foundation of medical research post doctoral fellowship for aging research he uh, joined there for 2 uh, years and after that uh, he is at this moment in stanford barham previous medical discovery institute of san diego california usa and uh, along with that he have published so many research works in different reputed journals and uh, right now he is a principal supervisor and uh, he is also uh, doing his post doctoral fellowship in san diego and more importantly uh, he is a prolific popular science writer uh he is writing in vernacular language in bengali in english these are very much uh, interesting for all kinds of audience and uh, he has continuously updated our information about this covid 19 situation uh, we she ha have successfully tried to uh, clarify our uh, clarify the misinformations which are spreading about this virus development and uh, his writings are so very interesting and i would request uh, everyone to 
read his some of those writings and he has also written in our vernacular uh, journals like uh, in desh he uh, is a regular writer in uh, different newspapers and he is a very interesting person and i would request uh, nirmallo nirmallo dashgupta to join with us and present his work present his uh, today's presentation uh, us nirmallo welcome could you please uh, switch on your mic uh, nirmallo uh, am i audible now yes yes you are audible yes yes Oh, thanks, thanks, Mr. Chandran, for your kind introduction and kind words. Uh, only one correction is that uh, that uh, I received the Glenn Foundation Award. Uh, that's the award that we say institute. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Otherwise, everything. Is fine. I am uh, last uh, three and a half years. I am with uh, uh, Sanford Barnum Medical uh, Discovery Institute. Okay. Uh, so now, I would like to thank uh, Ashutosh College. Uh, PG is one of the department, and I would like to thank uh, head of the department and especially Dr. Chandran, who is my friend and my old colleague. So now I will start my presentation. I will share my screen. Dr. Uh, Chandran, you give me that. Yes, 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 yes. You share. Yes. Screen is yours. Can you see? No, it's it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Can you see it now, Dr. Chandran? Ah, uh, just a second. Let me select you. Oh, uh, can you pin or uh, everyone be able? Wait, wait. No, uh, one second. I think this is the presentation. Yes. Can you see it now? Yes, yes I think this is the slide you are showing, and uh, we yeah. are in full screen right now. Yeah, yeah. Let's get. Full is it not visible? It is visible. It is visible. Okay. 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 Thanks. Okay. Okay. Uh, before before uh, I start my formal uh, lecture, I would request all the participants that please appeal my presentation. Then uh, my presentation, you can see always my presentation. If someone by mistake click the present now button, still you can see my uh, screen. And I would request please don't click present now when I will be presenting. And if you still press, then please uh, press the stop presenting. Then everything will be fine, uh, because I am telling this because it happened in my earlier webinar. Someone just clicked the present now, then their screen was sharing, and then people uh, could see my screen. So I think uh, everyone should uh, see my screen. Then I will start. So you know on the today's topic that back and the coexistence of viruses. When I, when uh, I heard about this zoonotic disease from bats, I always remember somehow it always came to my mind the rhyme from Hari Kondo Shukumar Rai that Badur Hari Oray Ovai Kajaru, Achke Rathe Dekh Dekh Akna Mazaru, Achke Hita Re Chamti Ke Ar Pethera, Ajbe Shavai Morgui Dur Bechera. My friend showed up Rai. He also translated it for the non-Bengali audience that Ohaji said the battling. Unite the real ringa dinga ding wolves and bats will come. You see, and the deer mouse will be rest in peace. So it's always it's something like you know that uh, the bat is telling that there is a virus spillover to the rodent in the mouse, and then the mouse will die because of the virus. It, you know, similarly, I don't I know that Kumar I didn't think about that, but somehow I I always think uh, like this. Okay, so now. My formal presentation. Uh, Deep Chandran suggested me that uh, I should tell this topic like a story. Uh, I thought so. And I found it is actually not a story. It's a like a novel. Like a novel, it is a. It has a central theme, but it also has many plots, subplots, many characters. So, which is little 
it is not complex but it is sometimes too much information which can jumble up everything it is and i have to present it uh, within like what is the rule so uh, telling a, a story of a plot of a novel in a nutshell so i would refer to the audience from biological background that don't try to memorize all the molecules all the signaling pathway i am going to present just remember the uh, key molecules and the concept and the central theme the central what is the central theme you will understand and i will tell you what is the central theme there is a very beautiful one interesting central theme of this entire story and the audience who are from non biological background i request them just learn the concept which is very easy and uh, don't try it don't try to even memorize all the molecules uh, and try to stick with the central theme then everything will be very easier for you and for me so i divided uh, it's uh, like three segments that bats are asymptomatic carrier of many deadly viruses we know that that's the reason our uh, this webinar and we can predict that bats have some functionally different in an immune system that's the reason for their uh, subclinical uh, infection but the more interesting part of this is that why do bats have different immune system that's the more most interesting and that's the central theme of this topic now why did we start this because we know for this covid-19 pandemic uh, because for the covid-19 pandemic we all know that it came from bat uh, it is actually a coronavirus which is named severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 and which is already uh, caused infection of 30 million people worldwide and it is and we have the tip and this is not the first coronavirus which uh, caused this much uh, substantial morbidity and mortality there are other uh, two coronaviruses uh, just in two decades first one is the severe acute respiratory syndrome sars which originated in uh, china in 2002 and middle east respiratory syndrome mars which uh, originated in saudi arabia and the uh, in 2012 and the mortality rate is very high for uh, both of these coronavirus is uh, you can see the mortality rate is 10% and 36% so these three coronaviruses we uh, have uh, have seen the outbreak from these three coronaviruses and now what is the common of these coronaviruses all three coronaviruses are originated from bats maybe the intermediate host was different but all originated from a bat coronavirus so for sars cov 1 it was uh come through civet cat in bengal it's bhamberal and uh, i think so uh zoology uh dipan dipchandan or other faculty members can tell you is it really bhamberal or not i thought it's bhamberal uh, civet cat and for mars cov 2 the intermediate host was camel and for sars cov 2 the present uh, covid-19 causing uh, coronavirus it came to pangolin and uh, from bat to pangolin to human so all originated from all the coronavirus has originated from bats and not only coronavirus uh, there is a recent publication in lancet the uh, title of this uh, article is from hendra to wuhan in a quarter of century hendra is a uh, place in australia where Uh, the hendra virus outbreak happened so you can see from 94 uh, from 94 to 2019 there are many outbreaks and which all are originated from bat like the uh, deadly ebola sars mars hendra nipah uh, you can see the all the bats and the viruses here so but it is so deadly you can see there is a death rate is fatality rate is 1% to 80% 70% but it doesn't go viral it doesn't go any harm to bats bats are the uh, always they become asymptomatic carrier of this virus they are reservoir and they maintain a sub clinical uh, infection in their uh, body so before going to their uh, discussing their immune system i will tell I don't want to demonize bats because now you can think, you can think that 
uh, bat are the reservoir for the viruses. So if we destroy their habitat, it will be a good thing. Then we don't have uh, any chances to get the viruses in the human. But it's not their fault. It's our fault. Because last 100 years, our population growth is so high that there is a severe uh, intersection between bat habitat, human habitat, and the domestic animal habitat. So it always uh, is our fault, and we uh, we are encroaching their habitat. We are making deforestation. So this is the current. Uh, Dikchandu, can you uh, request please someone that uh, there is one sound of the car is passing and horn? I can see. I can part hear. Hello, participants. Uh, it is a gentle request. Whoever is uh, um, switched on uh, their mic. Or their screen. You can see the intersection of the bat habitat, human habitat, and the domestic animals uh, uh, grazing field. There is inter intersection, and it is always uh, come from the somehow that it spill over from bat to domestic animals to humans or directly to human. So it is not bad fault; it's our fault because of the encroaching their habitat and deforestation. And there is case by case where there uh, we can prove it. That life on the wildlife is on the deforestation and for Ebola outbreak in 2007 because the hunting of fruit bats during their annual migration in Congo uh, and the recent uh, Ebola outbreak, I can just quote who some evidence suggested that the resulting forest loss estimated at more than 80%, can you imagine 80% brought uh, potentially infected wild animals and the bat species through thought to be the virus natural reservoir into closure contact with human settlements. So, and you know, the SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2 came from the wild animal meat market in China. So, in each cases, bats are not responsible, human activities are responsible. And it is also not true, bats are the reservoir of many viruses, but they are not special. There is a very recent paper in 2020, it is a statistical model. If you uh, look at the blue, dark blue, it is the chances of proportion of zoonotic disease. You can see this blue box is in all orders, like primates, uh, Chiroptera is the bat order, and primates and rodents. You can see it everywhere. So we don't know that if uh, if not bat, then next uh, uh, zoonotic disease will maybe come from rodents. Uh, so bats are not special. And I will go to the next segment, the actual segment of my talk. But I conclude this segment is like to mention that bats are our friends, not foe because the insect eating microbats consume millions of bugs at a night and which can act as a natural pest control and which can save millions of dollars and the toxic effects of these pesticides. And the fruit uh, bats which pollinate plants, so, uh, even I don't know, it's in your area, but I found it in National Geographic that in fact more than 500 plant species, including mangoes, bananas and avocados depends on bats for pollination. And finally, fruit-eating bats help disperse seeds so rainforests can grow, helping to mitigate the effects of widespread deforestation. Okay. Okay, now the actual topic. Uh, we know all the fictional superhero, the Batman, but I think the bat is a real superhero. The bat order, the kind of order is a real superhero. Uh, why? You will understand when I will present that. First, the thing that bats are the most unusual and specialized of all mammals as flight is their main mode of locomotion. So this is the central theme. Remember this. In each slide, you will just remember that bats can fly. That's the central theme of this topic. Now, uh, I read little about the, these bats because uh, I think most of you know this, but still I have to <laughs> tell this. Uh, there are two types of bats, micro and mega. Micros are small in size, which fits on insects. And because of their echolocation, they have large ears. And for mega bats, they are large and they are endangered. And they fit on fruit and they have small ears because they use sight for their uh, food. And there are, this is after rodent, this is the most uh, species uh, rich and rich order. There are more than 1,400 species of the bats, and only three bat species in the world are vampire bats. I mean, they are feeding on the cattle blood. But because of these three species, uh, many people uh, have many misconceptions, and they kill in South America. Uh, they kill millions of bats. Uh, though 
it is a very uh, beneficial species for our uh, planet and that size in this 1400 species says the size varies uh, very much like uh, from a smallest mammal and smallest uh, bat also the bumblebee bat which weighs only 2 grams and the golden crown flying fox which is the largest bat species which weighed up to uh, 1.2 kilograms so there are different sizes and another amazing fact of bats their longevity if you see the regression lines this is the uh, in general the species maximum life span correlates with the body mass so if you see mouse will be here and their life span is very low but if you see the same sorry oops uh you can see this this all the yellow dots are for bats and their longevity range is very high human will be here and bats are also here and uh like many bats they can live 30 to 40 years some bats uh, they live 20 years which is still very long for their species uh, of size and bats have very low incidence of cancer that is another amazing fact so that's why i telling that bats are the real superheroes now the question that what are the different uh, we can predict that there is the antiviral immune response is different than uh, other non bat mammals but what is the difference before that i have a disclaimer because i'm like any commercial <laughs> product the disclaimer is in smaller font uh, because i told you that bat species is more than 1400 but it is not possible to study all the 1400 it is uh, mainly studied between uh, within 10 uh, species so it is important to point out that bats are a, a very diverse group so a mechanism found in one species does not necessarily apply to all bats but still i think and we think that it maybe it is applicable the same kind of thing we can see in different species of bats because there is one central thing bats can fly uh before discussing uh, bats immune system we should uh, discuss the immune immune system uh, of other mammals or bat also uh this is very grossly i am telling not very technical integrity of this signaling that when some virus dna or rna virus uh, they invade our cell then our cell can recognize mainly they are by their genomic materials like rna or dna and then they uh produce interferon and this interferons they itself also uh, stop the replication of that infected cell kills the other viruses and they also induce the interferon stimulated genes which is called isg and isg also inhibit the virus replication and uh, maintain a antiviral state in our body now what happen for the non bat mammals when the viral load is low the interferon is enough they clear the, with their isgs they clear the viral burden they clear the viral burden and but when the viral burden is very high then interferons are not enough what they do they call the other immune cells like macrophage uh, dendritic cells natural killer cells these cells uh, come to the site infection site and they secrete a massive level of the cytokines interferon also a cytokines uh, they also use the different cytokines like tnf alpha il1 alpha il1 beta il6 when i tell about the these things uh, you just consider those are the cytokines and these cytokines they is a they uh, don't recognize the infected or uninfected cell they just massively damage uh, all the cells and when this is cause the cyto uh, kind storm then all the healthy cells that also going through the apoptosis means program cell death and die and that's why uh, what happened the cellular fluid uh, that is come out from the cells to the lung so lung uh, loses its capacity for breathing and then we need ventilation we need oxygen and if this is more severe then we can die so that's the basic part of our uh, immune system so virus 
actually virus would not kill us our own own immune system kills us right because of these cytokine storms and these cytokines is like a massive bombardment on our uh, system which is non specifically damage the entire cell uh, and tissues but what happened to the bat i don't know it is why it is showing box it is actually alpha for bat they have always constitutively express ifn alpha continuous a low level of ifn alpha uh, secreted in their body so this clears the viruses and they maintain this uh, state always their um, viral burden is never become high it is always become low because of continuous interference signaling and this interference also induce the interference stimulating isgs interference stimulating genes which is like bst2 mx1 and this bst2 and uh, mx1 they are known for the replica uh, they inhibit the restric uh, the replication of hiv ebola and uh, broad spectrum mx1 which is recognized as a having broad spectrum antiviral activity against many rna viruses and some dna viruses so that is one point that bat continuously express a low level of interferon alpha so the by that means they can maintain a low level viral burden now how can they control this uh, secretion in a low level you can see uh, whereas uh, where human has 13 uh, interferon genes bat ha bat sa only three interferon genes you can see other species 18 13 but bat have only three interferon gene so that is one of the reason for their controlling interferon secretion even you find that all the interferons when pig has 42 interferon genes cow has 43 human has 17 bat bats have only 10 interferon genes so this is the one part of their immune system that they have few numbers of interferon gene so interferon can uh, inter uh, interferon can activate the other immune system and call to them in the site now they have another interesting uh, feature in their immune system we most of us we know the about the canonical nf kappa b pathway which uh, is a transcription factor nf kappa b is a transcription factor and which is a master regulator of inflammation and it produce uh, actually it is the main uh, uh, transcription factor which causes cytokine storms and in nf kappa b family of protein there are five members like uh, p65 rel a rel b serial nf kappa b1 nf kappa b2 and except the rel c all are those are the transcriptional activator but rel c rel c is a transcriptional repressor which can repress the nf kappa b transcription factor and like uh, when nf kappa b try to like p65 try to activate tnf alpha it can act as a repressor there and when bat invade us uh, there is a massive cytokine storm caused by this nf kappa b so if we have serial then we can control this uh, massive cytokine storm but let's see what we have if you look at the tnf alpha gene one of the major cytokine during infection you can uh, this gray boxes gray boxes are the nf kappa b recognition site and the red boxes are uh, serial recognition site you can see from gorilla monkey donkey pig horse mouse and uh, uh, human we don't have any red box we all have this gray boxes that means there's no repressor element in our tnf alpha promoter but look at the three species is a bat they have that red boxes and that means they have the repressor element in their tnf alpha gene which can control the nf kappa b Uh, and it can't produce the cytokine storm and not only tnf alpha uh, i think um, uh, other cytokines they have also this severe repressor element so three things bats continuously secrete interferon alpha bat have a smaller number of interferon genes and bats have a serial repressor in their promoter of this tnf alpha and other cytokines there are more things this is uh, 
when uh, some virus dna virus they attack the mammalian cells so our cell can recognize that because dna is actually a genetic material so it should be nucleus when it is in the cytoplasm so our system can recognize it and then it produce the immune uh, signaling one of these is a uh, pyhin protein pyhin protein family and one of the pyhin protein is am am2 and aim to recognize the cytoplasmic dna and activate the immune signaling which is like il1 beta and if aim to aim to signaling is severe then it can also cause the cell death which is called pyroptosis means a pathway of cell death that uh, inherently result in inflammation so aim to induce secretion of mature il1 beta il18 it is happening in non bat mammals you can see human have this uh, aim to gene horses have this aim to gene uh, dog is also have the similar kind of genes but look at the bat genome they don't have this uh, pyhin gene family the entire pyhin gene family is lost in bats and so when they recognize the dna viruses there is no uh, secretion of il1 beta il18 there is no uh, activation of this pyhin pathway and there is no chances of pyroptosis right so this is another amazing thing but remember that if all this evolutionary thing is related to its flight remember bat can fly another dna sensing mechanism which is c gasting pathway if there are some cytoplasmic dna as i told that because cytoplasmic dna is not a uh, usual thing so our body and our cells that recognize as a foreign uh, dna and as a viral dna so they or bacterial dna uh, they recognize it and they induce uh, cgas is a sensor for that which can recognize the dna double stranded dna and can and activate the sting signaling pathway which also produce the interferon pathway Uh, for human uh, this is actually my area of research i work on the uh, human sting signaling uh, the, during aging you can see there is a phosphorylation site which can activate the sting pathway and can uh, induce a massive amount of interferon with alpha yeah sorry interferon beta but in bat this sting this site is lost this sting for bat the sting is mutated it is not non functional but is mutated so because they don't have this phosphorylation site so they can secrete ifn beta but very low level so the nature of this weakened but not entirely lost functionality of sting may have profound impact for bats to maintain the balanced state of effective response but not over response against viruses again remember bats can fly so now we know that we have a functionally different in a defense pathway of bat is the key of the peaceful coexistence with deadly viruses but why is it different than other mammals that is the question and the answer is bats can fly now it's more formally if i discuss that what is the difference between bats and all other mammals so as we know the most striking feature of bats that their capacity for sustained flight not any gliding uh, or something it's real flight and this flight result the 15 fold increase the metabolic rate and because uh, and which is uh, seven fold in only whereas it is only seven fold increase in rodent when they are running to exhaustion and two fold increase in metabolic rate of most flying birds but for bats it's 15 fold increase in the metabolic rate and because of the higher metabolic rate they need more oxygen and which is 30 times higher oxygen consumption while they rest and while they fly so they need 30 times more oxygen during their flight and bat also use 10 times more energy than other mammals of the same size during an average day so what happen they during flight they need more metabolism more metabolism need more oxygen and more oxygen means what uh, before more oxygen i will tell this thing that metabolism uh there is a old hypothesis that because of their higher metabolism the body temperature is constant uh, consistently above normal and it maintains a fever like state 
and people thought that this fever like state is actually helpful to maintain the virus uh, load but this is uh, a, a old hypothesis it's not wrong actually but this is uh, a quick hypothesis uh, because now because of this immunology and molecular biology we know detail of this immune system so but uh, yeah that is you can say there is some old hypothesis and bats temporary body temperature is always high during their flight and because their metabolism rate is high oxygen consumption is high and this oxygen can cause the reactive oxygen species that means electron rich oxygen uh, species which can oxidize our dna our proteins our lipid and you know uh, for general uh, which is from who are from non biological a background that it's called commercially free radicals you can uh, hear this term several times during any uh, commercial advertisement the free radicals these are the free radicals and these free radicals oxidize our cell dna and which cause dna damage and if there is a dna damage in our cell there is a dna damage response and this if we have this dna damage response then our cell stop growing they uh, can't proliferate and they stop and maintain this is called a senescent state and the cells are senescent and this is also my area of research that cellular senescence so when there is a dna damage cell stop growing and this is now uh, known in uh, because our old day in our when we age our cells uh, receive many stresses from the environment and one is the replication uh, uh, stress and for that our cells stop growing and which is also responsible for many diseases which is uh, under study that what people think that the parkinson alzheimer uh, tissue degeneration degeneration in all cases cellular senescence uh, has some role and another thing is that if the damaged dna can come to the cytoplasm from the nucleus because nucleus cell try to do that because of the uh, it causes the genomic instability in the nucleus so i try to uh, push back the damaged dna to the cytoplasm before discussing that i can tell that because to uh, reduce the ross induced dna damage bats have a very efficient dna repairing system and Uh, this you can see the, all the orange molecules they are under the positive selection in the bat ancestors ancestors and this may be directly related to minimizing or repairing the negative effect of ross generate as a consequence of flight so i told you that bats can fly that's the main theme of this topic so bat can fly bat can produce more ross more ross means more dna damage so what happened this uh, pathway uh, become very efficient uh, under the positive selection and the, i told about the serial pathway the serial is also in that pathway which is also another evolution of the due to flight i will tell it uh, later in detail so now we can see that because bat received that much uh, reactive oxygen species and dna damage so in bat cell dna though they have a very efficient dna repairing system still there are chances that the mitochondrial dna or Uh, genomic dna that can come to cytoplasm then what happen the cytosolic dna can be recognized by the am2 pathway and can produce the il1 beta and il1 and can cause the apoptosis of the cells that's why they don't have this whole pyhin gene family another sensor is c gas and which activates sting so sting is nucleated in the uh, in a bat so it can produce that much interferon and that much uh, cytokines they have serial repressor which is directly correlated with their uh, uh, dna repairing pathway the serial uh, positive selection so they have the repressor which other mammals don't have and which can control the cytokine storm so they have this three beautiful thing in their uh, Due, due to the molecular evolution, which can uh, reduce the excessive in inflammation due to detection of cell DNA, their chances of cell DNA is very less because of their uh, efficient DNA damage. But if still there is some DNA, they can control it. 
So uh, that's why I'm calling there the super real superheroes. Uh, you can I, I explain why they have because due to flight and ROS all these things metabolic rate they have the uh, pihin loss of uh, loss of pihin family members mutated uh, CDA uh, stream and the NF uh, serial repressor element in their TNF alpha gene. But you can ask that then why bat uh, always constitutively express the IFN alpha, but even without infection, that is also somehow linked to the uh, DNA damage because uh, some subset, uh, the subset of the interference stimulating genes has been linked to resistance to DNA damage in human cells. So it is also thought the evolution of prolonged uh, interference stimulating gene response in bats may be another adaptation caused by evolution of flight. So bat flight, increased metabolism, more oxygen consumption, more free radicals, more cellular DNA damage. So it is then it is positive in ancestor, it is positively selected and which cause bats with lower inflammation. So this is the relation between the DNA damage response and innate immune response in bat. And what is the main theme of that? Because bats can fly. That is the main theme, as I told earlier. And as I mentioned in my previous slide, I am again presenting it that bats live substantially longer than non-flying mammals of similar body size. You can see the microbat and mouse is here and microbat is here and human is here. So more body mass we uh, directly correlated to the uh, uh, longevity. So you can argue that the species capable of active flight are better able to avoid predators and are therefore less prone to environmentally driven mortality. Yeah, that's true. Bat can fly. So uh, bat is a less chance of uh, this kind of predator and other uh, thing. They can fly and they can collect their food. But if we consider the hallmarks of aging in humans, we found that the, there is genomic instability because of the DNA damage with our entire life. And this damaged DNA can cause cellular senescence. Uh, this mitochondrial, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction happens with age and our telomeres always become uh, shortening with each replication cycle. So this happen with human aging or maybe other mammals, but uh, human are studied mainly. So you can we can say that this is the uh, hallmark of aging. This is a cell paper, beautiful picture from the cell. But what happened to the bat? This is just a two uh, days ago. This paper came, which is uh, this group is very famous for their longevity studies. So, uh, there is a review paper. So in bat, because of the efficient uh, DNA repair system, their genomic instability is maintained in age, with age. And because they have the uh, DNA repair, efficient DNA repair system, their telomeres uh, do not shorten in with age and they have because for flight their mitochondria is highly efficient so they have a very efficient mitochondria which we don't have and the senescence i told about that that the cell stops growing because of the dna damage because they don't have dna damage uh, so maybe they don't have senescence also that's the reason for their longevity so the evolution of ability of flight might itself have required adaptation of that as a side effect to not long lifespan. So flight, lifespan, and the virus, uh, asymptomatic car carrier of virus, all three are linked. If you see that the they have the exceptional uh, longevity, they and all of this actually started for the evolution due to flight. They have resistance to DNA damage and uh, because of the flight, because of this ROS generation, they ev evolve like this. They have efficient DNA uh, repairing system and resistant to DNA damage and which is actually correlated with this coexistent with viruses because of their suppressed immune system and which is also caused the exceptional longevity and no cancer. Now you can ask that 
do these viruses provide any benefit to the bats? There are some speculation that continuous infection of bats with these adapted viruses may actually provide a superior antiviral immune state against new invading viral pathogens. If some viral uh, path, new virus attack to the virus, uh, they have the already that interferon alpha and other thing, so they can clear those viruses, new viruses. It was also reported that if uh, if you if some infected uh, bat cells, which is a natural virus for that, uh, for bat, if you try some other viruses from different species, you will find that uh, it can't infect those cell, infect, uh, already infected cells. And there is another uh, hypothesis uh, that some viruses, they preferentially target the tumor cells. Uh, and it is possible that the some viruses that bat have, they have that oncolytic property and which can uh, cause the anti-tumor activity. So bat has a very low incidence of cancer. Uh, now the question is, are bats susceptible for other infections? Uh, you can, uh, I would tell that yes, bats are susceptible for other infections, like uh, they can also infect with this white nose syndrome, fungal disease, which killed million of bats in North America. And bat also susceptible to bacterial infection. So even that white nose syndrome, that is not transmissible from bats to other humans or other mammals. They, uh, this white nose uh, syndrome is uh, not uh, the, can't cause any damage to other mammals, but it can uh, cause damage to bats. So, before uh, I think I I start very fast. It should not be like that. That uh, human activities are actually responsible for the viruses crossing over from bats and causing pandemics like coronavirus. And before, uh, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> why she is so fast. <laughs> uh, before uh, finishing my uh, presentation, I would uh, tell you that uh, there's a time for beating my own drum, that as Deepa Deep Chandan mentioned, that I wrote this is a very lucid manner with uh, using law less technical terms in which was published in this in 2nd May uh, 2020 edition and you can read it in free by downloading this ABP Max, ABP Bengali and there she is also publishing this printed version. So if you are interested, you can uh, collect and you can read. And before uh, finishing my presentation, I have another request that my, my maternal grandfather who was the HOD of the chemistry department uh, in Ashutosh College. Uh, this year is his uh, birth centenary year. So as a family, we are thinking to publish one memoir of uh, him. So I would request if you know someone of the chemistry department uh, who as a student, as a colleague, who can give some uh, input and we can publish it in that memoir. Uh, you can please send this to the uh, these numbers or you can mail me. Uh, so, thank you. And now I am ready for the question answer. Uh, if there are any questions. Hello. Thank you, uh, Nirmala. Uh, Am I, am, I very, am I very fast? I, I don't know. Why. I think I think little bit. Uh, you can take some time if you want to. If you something more to say, uh, because uh, questions uh, are not yet arrived because there are so many questions. But uh, one of our students is actually responsible for collecting all those questions to and send it to me, and that still not arrived. Okay. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, oh, should I say? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yes. Yes. Go on. Can I? Can I? Can I talk? Yeah. Hello. Uh, first, let me let me congratulate uh, Doctor Chakraborty. 
uh, I am uh, Dr. Sujal Bhattacharya from the Department of uh, Zoology. Uh, you have enlightened us uh, various aspects why bats are able to possess such type of uh, viruses of pandemic potential or epidemic potential. And uh, I do agree with you. And I do not know whether you have received my publications to the Chandan Chakraborty. I have published three papers on coronaviruses. And one of such papers related with the uh, bats. Uh, you are, I will agreement with the view that bats are possibly not the threat, public health threat, rather they are threatened by the humans. And because of this situation of deforestation or encroachment, uh, uh, they are, their position is endangered. And this causing a selection pressure, and that might have the reason for the positive selection, and they want to try to switch over. That is a right. switch over mechanism. And yes. since they are not directly coming into the contact with the human through the intermediate host, they are uh, trying to switch over. And possibly, my understanding, as you have mentioned, that asymptomatic, that itself is asymptomatic. But that is not requires some amplifier. And Possibly, this is an opportunity for the SARS-CoV-2 to get into the human to amplify themselves. And, and, they, and human is a very available and a very large number of uh, population. So it is their survival. I think when bats are threatened, the virus survivability is also threatened. So bad, uh, bats is tried to the host switching. This is my one understanding, and you have raised many aspects which I am not appropriately qualified to uh, to comment upon. But uh, the evolution uh, of the or the ability of fly might itself require some certain adaptations which you have mentioned, and as a side effect, that increases the long lifespan, and they are resistance mm -hmm. to certain mm -hmm. DNA damage, and uh, 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 they have a very low, you know, the interferon genes, very low number, that actually provides certain types of protection. And you have also mentioned about interferon signaling and the cytokine storms. That is the main reason for the, it is not the virus is killing, but because of the cytokine storms is killing. That is a very fantastic idea you have raised. And uh, also you have the human aging process by, by, uh, by uh, uh, the understanding of the human aging system. So it is a wonderful lecture. I really thank you. And uh, uh, but particular issue of that and in a corona uh, 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 will be publishing my, my paper in and all it can give you some idea because that is uh, mainly based on the disease ecology part. We have not dealt with the molecular aspect, mm -hmm. but I think disease ecology uh, and the molecular biology will be a complementary concept uh, for type of research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Nirmalo, your comments. Um, Hello, Nirmallo. Yeah. I I yeah. need to have your comments on uh, SARS opinion. Yeah, you are you, you are right that uh, we are the uh, responsible person, and uh, if we, uh, Dipchandran sent me your paper. Uh, actually, he sent me just last night. I told, why did you send like right now? You can send me earlier. Then I can read it. <laughs> it's uh, I I uh, okay, look at the topic. This is this is this is very good, and I should read the, this paper, and I will, uh, and yeah, and uh, there is a recent paper that we need uh, to conserve the bats because if we kill the bats and it uh, it is it would be a disaster uh, because bats uh, conservation is required and bat is the reservoir, but bat is not only the reservoir. Rodent is another reservoir because uh, the things like that. 
which species have uh, which order have larger species number that's their chances of getting disease is more and rodent is the largest uh, species rich order so it possible the next uh, disease can come from the rodent not from bat so from the bat one thing to talk about yes sir yes sir please uh, the dr chakravarty yes sir uh, actually when i was listening to you mm. i was really uh, uh, very very excited that you are actually reinforcing my idea of publication so i it was a review paper and i i find and you will find some similarities with your understanding apart from the molecular aspect i have not touched upon the cellular and molecular aspect which you have talked about but initially the concept that uh, i have written that uh, bats are not a threat to the human society human community is a threat to the bats and the relationship between the viruses and the bats is since time immemorial so why these things are coming out today because because of the deforestation because of, because of the encroachment and the bad animal pulpy exactly and because of the the selection pressure and climate change is also additional aspect climate change is also additional aspect for creating such type of selection exactly so exactly the random mutation process they have selected and they switch over to the human uh, through the intermediate yes. this is one aspect another thing i have missed professor gobindolal banerjee was from ashutosh college yeah 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 he um, uh, he is my dadu means uh, maternal grandfather uh, he okay okay was okay, okay. nevalo uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me let me i take it a pride that i am a direct student of professor gobindolal banerjee oh, from ashutosh okay. college That's okay. Nice okay. So, if if you tell us something uh, personally, not now. No, no, no. I am telling please, you. Please send we call your we call your grandfather as GLB. He is more popular. Uh, you know, today in I see the students and faculty they are referring the name of the professor. But in our time, we never ask the name of the professor by addressing them. That it is Govind. We are used to tell. that it is professor glb so i was really uh, thinking okay. about when you glb i am i directly i uh, directly i am a student in background in my bsc level okay. so it is a great okay thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir yeah if if you if you write few lines about him and send us it will we we will be very grateful uh, and i pay my respect ami dite paro Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, the channel over to you. And, uh, and because of the uh, you told about the encroachment and the deforestation, it's real. And in uh, I, if I would uh, show you the my old slide here. Uh, but in two thousand thirteen paper. You can see. Can you see my uh, slide, Dipchandan? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can leave. In the 2013, the uh, writers mentioned, the authors mentioned that the if the because of this encroachment and uh, deforestation, they are telling they anticipated that the bat and animal coronaviruses to human can be expected to continue and possibly escalate. And you now this 2020 and within seven years there is a huge escalation. Of this uh, uh, coronavirus infection, and it already yeah, killed six hundred thousand people. So it is our fault, not bats' fault. And uh, uh, you are right. Another thing that when bats are stressed, they shed more viruses. And yeah, because viruses. if you, we yeah, if we destroy their habitat, so they will be in stress, and they can shed more viruses to us. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Chakravarty, we will be keeping touch, and you will get my email address from Dr. Chandran. He is a very honoured colleague of mine and a very uh, a brilliant person and a very good addition in our department of zoology. Surely, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, I like to mention. Uh, I like to mention one thing uh, because uh, I was actually thinking this uh, interaction between uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, uh, Nirmallo, uh, because uh, I have found that both of them uh, they are taking interest. on bats on from different angles uh, right this meeting is very much necessary 
and uh, and another thing uh, it is my opinion that uh, humans uh, have their uh, their intentions are quite clear but humans can do anything there are two human like approach one is so, so very human like that we uh, used to destroy whatever comes in our way if bat comes as a reservoir of uh, deadly diseases we will try to abolish bat bats but it will not work right and on the other hand we can uh, do some humanitarian work or uh, some more ecologically friendly work that where uh, we should work on bats in particular because um, from uh, from my uh, interest i have seen that working on bat is very difficult because it is a nocturnal animal and very very difficult to study different difficult to reach their habitats so uh, you most of the people they don't take interest on bats so because of that reason we know very little about bats the ecological services of bats so once we start to know about them their uh, goodness then uh, we may think that it is not that that we need to just uh, destroy the bat habitat destroy the bats we have to protect bats because bat if bats are there they will see they will protect us also right so yeah. uh, once again we have to uh, shift on a more sustainable more uh, balanced uh, balanced developmental uh, strategy so um, so understanding on bats their immunology is very, is a very fascinating thing from you nimallo and uh, we look forward for further uh, this kind of discussions dialogues from you and uh, from others also thank you nimallo okay uh, is there any question sir i can see in chat box many questions so if you read that so, question so, and so, ask thank me thank you thank you i am getting those questions and I, 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 if there is some ecological uh, uh, questions and uh, geology background questions i would request uh, sir and you to answer those questions because sure, you know sure. my background is from my chemistry i am just reading this a uh, few papers for this presentation only okay i can uh, from one molecular, question here molecular biology fine molecular biology and immunological purpose it is fine i can see one question that uh, they says that do you think that virus shows commensalism with bat what is your opinion do do the, uh, in a commensal okay. arrangement or yeah, in a parasite host can you, arrangement can you, can you tell me the term in a lay person manner uh, this okay, commensalism commensalism i think uh, we used to use this term because uh, uh, some protozoa or some kind of pathogen which stays inside the body of the host without mm -hmm. that much so that is a commensalism approach it is not like a yeah. approach so do you consider that uh, bats are common uh, sorry viruses are common cell in bats i i don't think so okay but, but i think uh, um, because of this low uh, immune reaction low parasitemia uh, they may be considered bad uh, uh, viruses as well well uh, uh, the dr chala nil uh, dajgupta and dr chakravarti mm -hmm. may i throw some light upon this aspect Sir, please, yes, sir. Sir. Please, please, uh, please. Dr. Dasgupta already mentioned about the anti-tumor activity of the uh, certain types of presence of genes or uh, the presence of virus in the bats. So bats are getting some advantage by carrying those viruses. Uh, Dr. Dasgupta, you have mentioned it in your lecture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in that way, that is an advantage to the bats, and right. bats are giving support to the virus. So bats. Right. So virus is. Uh, getting one sort of a shelter, and at the same time, the bat is getting some anti-tumor activity because of the presence of such virus. Right. It is. It is a speculation, but uh, maybe it's true. Still, we need. If it is, because if it is right, I am saying I am not saying it is a conjecture. Uh, mm -hmm. By your uh, understanding, that mm -hmm. and uh, as far that question it is a commensalism or not, but in some way it is a win-win uh, situation for both the situation. right 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 uh, then now another question from ritoja chattopadhyay uh, she asked that uh, how is efficient dam dna damage repair pathway linked to prevention of shortening of telomere in bats telomere short um, in bats how dna damage because, pathway, what is the status of dna damage pathway because of the uh, when the uh, 
there is enough uh, telomere shortening there is uh, a dna damage signal which can make the cell senescent but for that uh, the because of the dna damage is but uh, because most of the study in just uh, not very clearly uh, proven fact most of the link to the evolution and speculation so people think that the because of the efficient dna damage repair the telomere is repaired and so there is no dna damage induced signal dna responses that's why there is no senescence in bad cells but these are main still there that the uh, the study is just started uh, and there is speculation so that is the answer okay okay another question i think it is a uh, very um, it is very uh, I, I i i i am reading it uh, it is mm -hmm. possible is it possible to develop this kind of antiviral state in human also by any kind of genetic engineering intervention uh genetic uh, i can say that uh, people are uh, trying to uh, develop the sting inhibitor that is not as a var for antiviral uh, i think var as a autoimmune disease there are some approaches is already taken and as a senolytic senolytic means which specifically uh, uh, kill the senescent cells for that purpose also some drugs is uh, being developed uh, so yes it is possible and people are working on that in taking that approach i know about the sting inhibitor because i am working on that where people are using sting inhibitor to control the uh, autoimmune diseases like which our cell dna can uh, give the immune responses so if we use the sting inhibitor so it can reduce the autoimmune uh, function why uh, so much a low number of uh, interferon genes in uh, bats than in other mammals uh that is also uh, people are speculating the uh, related uh, to their uh, evolution and this with uh, because interferon genes interferon genes uh, they activate the interferon stimulating genes which is actually uh, give the resistance to dna damage that's why this is evolved like this but if there is interferon response is very high then it is uh, it can cause a dna it can cause the damage of these bat cells so bat is evolved like that there is a continuous expression but is a control manner for that control manner their loci are lost from their genome thank you thank you uh, i think uh, there are questions also in youtube live uh, that i need to uh, look for but from that point from now uh, now on i can uh, request nirmalo that if i if i just uh, send you those questions those queries to you mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. whatsapp and our mail uh, it would okay. be uh, uh, helpful for us also to conduct this session because we need to close this session right now because uh, okay. it is uh, it will just take time because uh, there are most of the uh, people have responded in uh, they have actually they are actually happy to uh, listen this talk they they told that very informative session interesting and different presentations so most of the people have expressed their happiness and uh, okay thanks also, for that that i will send you through whatsapp and um, i would uh, finally i would request again once again dr bhattacharya to uh, give a short vote of thanks to dr nirmal dashgupta sir please well uh, well uh, it's a privilege and i find a connection with uh, his blood lineage with his grandfather uh, who was my teacher uh, to uh, it's a great moment for me to thank dr nirmal das gupta uh, for his uh, very brilliant uh, presentation and he is working in a in a, in a such a uh, level that i'm sure that something will good come out for the benefit and uh, uh, welfare of the human society and uh, and i thank also dr das gupta for taking uh, some time uh, for our uh, department uh, for uh, attending and responding to our request and at the same time although it is uh, our uh, our departmental activities but uh, our hod uh, dr sipona bhutorai and uh, Dr. Deep Chandran Chakraborty, our colleague, they have taken a great initiative with the support of our 
other other colleagues of the department and uh, without any uh, support and encouragement from the authority like our vice principal professor purbo rai and barsa uh, dr manush kobi it would not have been possible to conduct uh, such a type of try a try web webinar serving a, a series and they are, they have conducted uh, very successfully and uh, that is a very enriching knowledge is enriching session and uh, i also support uh, i also thank the technical uh, our staff the non teaching staff akulno uh, bhattacharya ji oshit ji for their continuous support and other colleagues of the department and uh, last but not the least uh, it is a uh, fulfilling and rewarding experience for all of us including our beloved students and uh, uh, in this challenging time uh, with so much difficulties and trying time our students are also taking uh, such type of interest uh, that's a great to see and i i think that they are uh, they are the future uh, knowledge bearer uh, or the torch bearer of the knowledge uh, domain uh, for the uh, for the scientific community so thank you everybody uh, for Uh, this attending session and organizing this session thank you very much mm, i think uh, somehow nirmallo uh, was out of this session in the last part uh, one one short poem this is for nirmallo uh, so unfortunately nirmallo is not here now uh, one short poem written for nirmallo that is in bengali i, I am reading it बदुरे बहादुरी हल भाईर चाष शतेक मारण रोग देहे बस तई बने बने भलो मानुषे आग्रासे बुझी से दिन घुचिल किलबिल मानुषे देहे भलो बस भाईर झोक बुझे भीड़ कर महामारी अतिमारी एके जत नेमे आसे कलो मेघ प्रलय मत देखे भेबे मन है पीछने तक बदुर अरण्य भलो दोषी हम Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Deepchandran. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Deep Chandan. Thank you, sir. Who is the composer? I think composer is Dr. Deepchandran Chakraborty. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the author is always uh, hesitant, so I understand he is also a uh, very good composer and a, a poet. So I think there is no conflict between science and poetry; uh, rather, yes, uh, one is complementary to each other. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, 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 the Dr. Chakraborty will send you another. Uh, uh, another poem uh, of some uh, anonymous poem uh, at this moment, and uh, about the how how we have invited the pandemic situation. Surely, yeah. And Nirmal, I am in Bangla. I am saying. शेटा होते हैं ये कोबिता जेटा तू की सुनते बात चीज़ तू की हमारे गला सुनते बात चीज़ हाँ सुनते बात चीज़ सुनते बात चीज़ सुनते बात चीज़ कान चंद तो एक चीज़ हम्म 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 तो unfortunately वही कोबिता टा तू ही जेही तू नहीं अमी चाइ चिलम तोर मुखे ही सुनते तो कोबिता टा अमी पोल ला मी मूर्ते হ্যাঁ আমি শুনেছি আমি শুনেছি আরে আমার কানেকশনটা হঠাৎ করে আমি মানে স্টপ শেয়ারিং করতে গিয়ে কানেকশনটা চলে গেল তারপরে আমি জয়েন করতে পারছিলাম না কেন আমি জানি না যাই হোক ঠিক আছে থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ যাই হোক তো এখানেই আমরা শেষ করব আমরা এমন একটা পৃথিবীতে আছি যেখানে আমরা ওয়েল কানেক্টেড আবার কোন কোন জায়গাতে আমরা হঠাৎ করে ডিসকানেক্টেড হয়ে যাই দ্যাট ইজ দি বিউটি অফ দিস লাইফ ডিসকানেক্ট হওয়াটাও অনেক সময় দরকার তো আমরা এই কানেক্ট করার যে নতুন মাধ্যম অর্থাৎ এই ওয়েবিনারের মাধ্যমে আমরা যে যার বাড়ির পরিসরে বসে যে আমরা একে অপরের সাথে যোগ যুক্ত হচ্ছি এটাও আমাদের কাছে একটা নতুন এক্সপিরিয়েন্স অলরেডি আমাদের যারা পার্টিসিপেন্টস দে হ্যাভ সেন্ডেড দেয়ার ফিডব্যাক অ্যান্ড উই উইল সেন্ড দেয়ার ই সার্টিফিকেটস শর্টলি অ্যান্ড থ্যাংকস এভরি ওয়ান থ্যাংকস এভরি ওয়ান আওয়ার ডিপার্টমেন্ট আওয়ার স্পিকারস আওয়ার পার্টিসিপেন্টস টু স্টে উইথ আস অ্যান্ড মেক দিস ওয়েবিনার সিরিজ a grand success thank you nirmallo ar tomar web tomar web whatsapp message ta patiye dio amar dorkar o ache battery research er papare ektu kaj kora dikhono tumi whatsapp ta patiye oboshoi oboshoi sir ei jogajog sthapon ta amar kache ekta bhalo onubhuti diye ashlo thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you thank you have a nice day have a nice thank you